Hey eLearner students, I wanted to demonstrate for you station number one of our friction lab that you will be able to do at home. I know that sometimes you don't have all the materials that we have in the classroom, but this is one that's really easy to um, modify and change up. If you have a question about materials that would be suitable, feel free to send me an email with an example. Don't send me an email with absolutely no ideas. I'm wanting you to think like a scientist and be a problem solver. The first thing you need is a paperback book. I know that you have one because your textbook is paperback. Hardback would work as well, and any size works. However, it is important that you have a string that's measured to about 24 inches, a paper clip, some kind of a bag that's inexpensive that your parents won't miss from the kitchen, a piece of wax paper, I've used a piece of laminated paper in place of that, and two types of sandpaper. The sandpaper is different sizes and it's called grit, and the number that indicates the grit is on the back. If the number is higher, it will be finer. I've actually seen sandpaper with an 800 on the back. And if the number is lower, like in this case it says P60, the pebbles on it are a little more rough. And I know it seems like it's opposite and a little bit counterintuitive, but that's just the way it works. I'd like you to have two different numbers so that you can really get an idea of how the friction changes based on the grit. Okay. So what you're going to first do is tie a knot in your string so that it makes one gigantic loop. And then I want you to take your paper clip and make it into an S clip. That just means you're going to bend it and open it gently. You might not be able to use that paper clip ever again, but you know, paper clips aren't that expensive. Then open up your book about halfway through and slide the string inside all the way, gently nudging it to the spine. It needs to hang off the edge of a table or a countertop. Okay? Now, you're going to take that S hook that you made out of your paper clip and you're going to pull it through, making a hole, inside your little bag and you're going to hang the bag off of the string, making sure that your entire book is slid away from the edge of the table and that it can hang down freely, not too close to the floor. Now, the first thing that you need to do is make sure that you have some pennies. If you don't have enough pennies to Add one at a time until this moves. Choose a different coin, but make sure that all of the things that you choose to create your weights are the same increment. I'm lucky. I have some actual science um, spring scale weights that we add mass with, and they are pre-measured. If you have these, great, and if you don't, pennies work great too. You're going to place them in the bag one at a time, and you're not measuring how far it moves or anything like that. You are just determining how much mass it takes for the book to move. So you're just gonna add one at a time, no movement, one at a time, no movement, one at a time, one at a time. Oh, it's starting to move, but now it's not moving anywhere. I'm wondering if the potential energy in the thunk of that penny made it move it. So I'm going to place this one in really gentle to see if this makes it move, and I'm gonna keep adding until it actually moves. For the sake of our demonstration, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and I'm gonna put it big weight in there, add the mass very quickly, but this is not what you're going to want to do because what you're looking for the book to do is to move smoothly. Now you don't really want it to move off the edge of the table because then it takes a lot more to set up your next step of your assignment. So take the bag, empty it out because you're going to start all over again, but this time underneath the book you need to create a path. Go ahead and start with the wax paper and again hang the bag off and add a penny at a time until you see the book move. You're going to want to measure how much mass you had to add in order for the book to move. Then change it up. Sandpaper A and sandpaper B. I don't care what you label your sandpaper as, A or B, just make sure you indicate what grit you used because I'm not sure what's available to you or what you'll be able to find. It's not necessary to spend a bunch of money and you can tell my sandpaper is well loved. As long as the grit is still there, it doesn't need to be brand new. Now, the last step in this is a little bit confusing, the hexagonal pencils. You don't want smooth ones because you're gonna try something. Underneath the book, I want you to try placing the pencils this direction so that they're perpendicular to the edge of the table and do the experiment like this. Then, I want you to switch it up and you will put the pencils parallel to the edge of your table and do it again. Same concept, same records. I am curious what your prediction will be for the pencils going the two different directions. 
make sure that after you've read through the entire process, you make some guesses or predictions, kind of like a mini hypothesis about what's going to happen for each of these variables before you begin. Then as you measure and record, you can add observations and compare them to your mini hypothesis. Good luck and stay tuned for station number two.